I don't know, man. I, I don't think this is for me, if I'm being honest. Yo, remember that vlog where I showed you guys the morning routine, which I was gonna try and stick to? You know, I did the stretching, I did the breakfast, oh, the skincare routine. Yeah, since that, which was like over a month ago, I've not done a single morning routine like that. <laughs> you have to understand, I'm a human being, right? I normally wake up for Fajr, I pray, I go to... I go. That, that, that's it, actually. I just go. I don't have time to, like, downward doggy stretch to stretch out my latissimus dorsi. Oh, pause. No, frick that, dude. I'm getting five more minutes of scrolling Instagram reels or TikTok. That's what I'm doing. Whoa! I'm in my mom's car. Brum, brum. I'm in my mom's car. Yeah, buddy. Alrighty then, dude. Uh, GP morning clinic done. Basically how it works is as a 50 medical student, I run like a pan, I run like a parallel clinic uh, with one of the doctors, patient, they come and see me, I take a history so I talk to them and I might do a little examination and then I'll call the doctor in. The doctor might ask any questions that I've missed out, which is uh, sometimes it's kind of embarrassing, but I'm there to learn, I'm not there to show off. That's what my dad, you know, told me growing up. And then in terms of the patients I saw, there's a lot of mental health. So the first one it was initially quite vague. I asked them, oh, so what's brought you in here today? Uh, and they said, I don't know. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, but then I went on to explain, like, they think they've been overthinking a lot lately. Thoughts of, you know, their girlfriend leaving them. They came in basically because they didn't want the relationship between them and their girlfriend to be affected. They want some help or advice for their overthinking. Their mood wasn't particularly affected in terms of they didn't really have low mood and there was no sort of like uh, hallucinations or delusions. Their work was okay as well, so it wasn't really affecting their work. It sort of was a bit vague and I was like, oh, like, you know, this is something with mental health, but it's not depression. Basically, they mentioned something about uh, their childhood. They opened up about how they were basically abused when they were younger and also that they just got had like family problems which um, was troubling them and they, they found the overthinking worse when they were by themselves so then it became more apparent that actually you know this is anxiety so a lot of the times there's the whole thing of like okay like doctors just pumping medication to the patient which is still what happened actually we, the, the doctor still gave like uh, metazapine which is uh, I think it's antidepressant but it's useful for anxiety as well but the main thing that's gonna help this patient the doctor explained is the counseling so we gave a number to the patient that they can use to self refer to counseling sessions where they'll just talk through about their problems and anxiety which is gonna help this person given sort of the history of abuse they had. and even as well when the patient was leaving the, they were like oh yeah actually I felt I feel better a bit so like that's a sign bro like if you've got dealing with mental health problems just like talk about it in it legit what did Paddy Paddy McBuddy say yeah there's a stigma in this world that men can't talk. Listen, if you're a man and you've got weight on your shoulders and you think the only way you can solve this by killing yourself, please speak to someone. I know I'd rather have me mate cry on my shoulder than go to his funeral next week. So please, let's get rid of this stigma and men start talking. It's like a broken leg. You wanna just leave that alone? Oh yeah, just bottle up your feelings. No, frick that dude. Frick it. Talk about it, dude. Get some help. The second patient didn't turn up. The third patient came up with like three different problems. This is a thing in GP as well. It's like, oh, what you came in with? Oh, well, there's this, 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 this. And you're like, dude, I've got 10 minutes, dude. There's a skill that you just have to learn to like compartmentalization and also uh, signposting and also time managing. In terms of setting up realistic expectations, just say like, okay, look, we probably only have time to like talk about two or three, two problems really. What the two things are most concerning you and then uh, you can set up another appointment. Uh, for the other problems. I'll just give a little summary. This is a patient with a background of hiatus hernia, reflux disease. They came in today over concerns of a few different problems. So one was cystitis because of increased frequency of urination and also pain on discomfort on urination. Another problem is that recently she has vomited dark black 
fluid. She describes this, the vomit as being fluid, no blood in it, and it's not coffee granules and no like particular texture in it. It's just fluid. This has only happened like the first time just recently. But before she vomited, she noticed like an acidy taste uh, in her mouth, and this happened about 3 a.m. 3 or 4 a.m and since then she's not vomited since. Also as well, she's been feeling very tired. She describes this as like a lack of energy, not being bothered to do anything. She described her mood as being fine, uh, no concerns there. Her sleep is fine as well, it's not been particularly changed or affected. In terms of ice, so what she thinks is, she thinks that the tiredness is due to low iron because she's had low iron in the past which she's been treated on for iron tablets but she's had no side effects and has, is happy to take. So yeah, that was the patient. Um, tiredness again, like the feeling of uh, uh, being lethargic, that can also be due to mood as well. It's not just low iron or other organic organic physical causes but also can be due to like psychologically like someone being depressed. That's why it's really uh, important to like ask about mood and and other stuff there as well and that's why it's important to uh, ask about ice as well so like ideas concerns expectations asking about her ideas about her tiredness opened up that information that you know she she has been iron deficient in the past which she has received iron tablets for and that she agreed with them as well so the plan is to like investigate her for iron deficiency anemia and also refer her for endoscopy because she was taking lansoprazole and she's still getting this heartburn and also she vomited this like dark black fluid so I mean, her being tired and perhaps iron deficiency anemia is significant because that can indicate some blood loss. I did ask if she had any bleeding from the back passage or blood in her stool, but she said no. But you never know, like she could be bleeding from up above as well. She, did, she didn't say she saw any blood in her vomit, but it being dark black, I mean, yeah. It could actually be that. And then the last patient was very like mental healthy, basically someone who's very depressed very anxious, panic attacks, self-harming, thoughts of taking their own life away. Now I'm getting used to just like being comfortable to ask, okay, have you had any thoughts like taking your own life? Thoughts of self-harm, thoughts of harm, harming others. The psychiatry placement that I did prior to this really helped because GP, you're gonna see some mental health stuff as well. And I was able to ask about halluc hallucinations and delusions as well, like comfortably as well. So that was sick. That was really nice, that was really good. She was on citalopram, an antidepressant, so she, that had been recently increased, so we just said, okay, give this three to four more weeks. That's what you normally do. If you put someone on an antidepressant, you give them like four, three, four, four weeks basically and review them after that. Referred her to this like CPN, community psychiatry nurse, for counseling, because she'd received counseling in the past, which she did think helped, but she felt like the sessions were too short. And given her sort of ongoing symptoms and her depression score was quite high, the PHQ score was quite high that she did recently. Like there's a step up to, from just counselling like a community psych nurse thing uh, that she could see and I'd probably spend more time with her basically and that should help. So yeah, that's it. That was the patients I saw today. In terms of my overall thoughts of GP, I don't know man. I. I don't think this is for me, if I'm being honest. A lot of the patients I was seeing, it was like, oh, they've got this chesty cough, this, that, oh, it's a viral cold, you can go home. Oh, there's this lump here. Okay, it's nothing to be worried about, go home. So like GP being a primary point of contact, part of your job is filtering out the patients who do need to be seen or do need intervention from the patients who don't need anything. A lot of the times, part of your job is reassuring the patients that, okay, you're okay, there's nothing wrong, just or watch and wait, like just go home, take some painkillers. Coming from a specialty rotation like psychiatry, psychiatry I found so three-dimensional. We had to think about, okay, their biological and medicinal therapies, but then what about the finances? Who's in charge of that? Okay, how do we get them back into society? What do they like doing? What about, about their job? This, that. Okay, who's their family? Okay, what support can we provide there? Which other teams do we need to involve? Psychiatry I really liked, but GP, there, there are other aspects to like, but another thing as well is when patients do get complex, I find that you don't really deal with it at GP, you just refer them on, but you don't really deal with that complexity. You, you refer them on to the hospital where they do the more specialist investigations, where they have the more specialist conversations. So you don't really deal with it, you just get to read about it on sort of the system. Okay, I'm still keeping it open, but I don't, I don't know if GP is for me. All right, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive my ass home and uh, we're gonna get a haircut, because your boy, oh. this beard, is our control, yeah? It needs to be and this fade. It's not even a fade, it's the trim is expired, so yeah. I'm gonna get the trim in it. Cheers! You know what it was? Look at that! Damn! Ah! Ah! Why you did that? Why you did that? No! They kind of swiped my neck. You went for it, man. But guess what? I'm still here. You can't get rid of me, bro. I took a dagger to the neck. Carotids.
and I'm still here. Can't stop, won't stop. Online learning done as well. Throughout the week as well, there's online learning that you can do, which is, is kind of... It's kind of stinky, I can't lie. It has been getting better. Like the first session, I can't like, oh my gosh. It was learning about the environment and stuff. And oh my God, bro. Oh, oh hell no, no man. What the Sometimes throughout medical school, you're going to have some lectures or some topics where you're thinking, why am I learning about this? How is this in any way relevant? I'm just being honest. I want to be honest in these videos and I want to give you a true de depiction of my thoughts on, on medical school. First session was on environment. That was painful. Second session was less painful. It was on like palliative care. And then the last session was actually really useful. It was on prescriptions and it's basically helping us prepare for our exams as well, like our written exams where we have to like prescribe medication. So that was really good. That that session was really good actually. And yeah, I've got the rest of the day to do what I want. So let me take you on a ride. Oh, whoops. I took a nap and woke up like 9 p.m. and woke up even more tired. So I didn't want to do anything for the rest of the day. Oh, whoops. That's a, <laughs> that's a reality of the situation. When you've got long placements, you come back just absolutely shattered. So just need a rest. But normally what I get up to in my spare time is going to the gym, yeah. eating out with friends. I like burgers, as you can tell. Playing footy on the weekends, visiting my friends in another city, getting up to all sorts of shenanigans over there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's the vlog. Make sure to subscribe because next video is going to be a Halloween special. If you know, you know. Yeah, hope you guys like the video. And peace.